Hey everyone, it's Sunday afternoon and we're driving to meet, we're meeting um, a friend that I haven't met yet, Cynthia, who has a YouTube channel called Weird and the Wonderful. Uh, and I accidentally stumbled on this, well accidentally it showed up, I was looking for wax statues and I found her and my mind was a blown. And uh, she has some really good stuff on YouTube, but I, I wrote to her months ago and I said, I have to meet you, I have to meet you. And, uh, and it turns out, I think she knew who I was, or Troy and I are, with uh, Julie Departed. And, uh, she, <laughs> and she likes what we do, and she's letting me us go into her house, and you're not gonna believe this. Oh my it? god. It's all in one room. <laughs> Look at this. Well, I'm going to shut the door right behind you. Okay. Oh my god. Come on in. I, this is stunning. Well, thank you very much. I love him. That's Fred McMurray. He's from the Absent Minded Professor. He's from. He's our first wax figure. And we got him at the auction at Movie Land Wax Museum. I remember that so well. I think really, I, I, I mentioned this to you before on, when we communicated. That, that was like my absolute favorite wax display because it's, it's got the, uh, what would be the word for that? There's a prop, um, there's a word for that, active props or something. Like that. Well, it's animated. And yeah. uh, that's an actual animatronic dog that was made. And that's Charlie the dog. And he has been that way, moving his head for like 45 years. Can you believe it? And it's so crazy too because that motor is the existing original motor, so it's been going a long time. Uh, we did add the lights to it so they would flicker. Um, we mm -hmm. did do that part. And if you can see inside the car, it's got everything that the Model A would have. It's got the foot pedal, it's got the brakes, it's got everything in it. It's very interesting. It is interesting because it's not a real car. They no, built it's this. Not. It was built in France, and the Beverly Hillbillies car was also made by the same company. It's made out of some sort of a lightweight wood, like a balsa wood or something, mm -hmm. a paper mache. And it, what's so crazy about it, if you look underneath here, um, Linda Blair, which yeah. is so weird. Oh my God. Everything <laughs> is, is just shouting at me to look at it. So I wonderful. always think, oh my gosh, it's so dirty under there. But look at the paint <laughs> job that they did on this. It's so realistic. Oh, it is. And what we do is we built a backdrop that was right next to it at Movie Land Wax Museum. Um, it was actually the restroom, but this was the facade, like it was flying right by a house, and we recreated it. And those are all the original leaves that were at Movie Land. It <laughs> was the... right over all the leaves. Oh my God, the care that you you've taken into into doing these things. I mean, the detail is, is spectacular, and oh, everywhere I look, these faces, they're, just, <laughs> <laughs> they're begging for attention. you got Lincoln. Yes, now Lincoln is from, uh, he's a GEMS studio, and he's from London, England, and he was uh, on display at the San Francisco Wax Museum. Oh, and you know what? I, Tom Fowler, which is a fantastic sculptor and art restor well, wax restoration artist, he did Shirley Temple, and look at her cute little face, down to her her teeth and eyes. And uh, you know, locks. it's one of those. I always, whenever I go to wax statues, I always line up their eyes. You know, so you could look right directly the way they're looking right into their eyes. And it sometimes it's disconcerting, <laughs> you know, when you're getting that eye contact with these things. Look at, the, I mean, the Bob Hope. Those eyes are really good. Now he was restored uh, by Tom Fowler, and I put an homage to Fowler's Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. So his name is out there. <laughs> wow. And um, he was, is that, that's his real height too, isn't it? Yes, he was 6'3", and that's his actual. Now this is interesting because this is uh, from the movie Titanic, his jacket that he's wearing. <laughs> okay. So I kind of mixed it up a little bit. I'm not sure if Billy Zane had wore this one, but it was one of the gentleman that wore it that was on the titanic the movie james cameron is that haunted mansion wallpaper no that was actually behind may west oh really on the staircase 
And that's a little bit, and this is Fred Astaire's The Mirrors that went all the way around him as they danced on the piano. I love that you know all this stuff. Now you <laughs> that you love it and cared for it, and you cared enough to, to collect it. Stallone. Yes. Look at the it. sweat on his hip forehead. I know, look at that beautiful body. Um, he is uh, sculpted by David Saletti, and this is kind of a portion, a condensed portion. And it's really interesting too, because I have the clapboards and it's got the wax back that, uh, there was two other people at the museum that they had fought and I forgot who they were, darn it. <laughs> this one's right, they brought two other stars in and out. Um, who would they be? Well, it would be uh, Apollo, probably Dolph, maybe Dolph Lundgren, maybe Mr. Yes. T, yeah. Yes, those two, I believe. Yeah, and then, um, this is uh, the Phantom <laughs> of the, the opera. opera. This is the original <laughs> organ. That was, um, and that's a real organ. Yes, it is. And we had to cut off, I hate to say it, about eight inches on the back to be able to fit it in. And this, um, sadly, uh, towards the end of um, Movie Land Wax Museum, they did get rid of some of the major figures and sold them off and replaced them. This was a replacement from Louis Tussauds. And, uh, but all of the props are all original. In fact, all the pipe organs and then all the lighting. Now, my son recreated all these. So he built the steps and we had this step and we always wanted a Mary Philbin because remember she kind of throws her arms up and mm -hmm. she turns when mm -hmm. she sees him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was really ironic because we were able to get this wax figure. It was in a miscellaneous boxes that were given to me. And this is a Mary Philbin, but it was from the 1920s, and it's a Pierre Amens wow. wax head. That is... I love her eyelashes. He was known for really overdoing it with the eyelashes. <laughs> but I love that part about her. It is really stunning. Thank you. I mean, you do. It does, you know, it, it looks good. Like, it could be somebody that's just made up standing in front of you. <laughs> she really does have incredible features. Yes, she does. Wow. And then my son just recently purchased Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> He's from Rear Window, which is a Hitchcock movie. Oh, of course, And I sure. love it because remember the note that he had put down underneath the door to kind of get the man startled and know that somebody was watching uh, him? Yeah, Raymond Burr, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And remember when they threw him out the window? Oh my gosh, that was such a scary scene. <laughs> yes. Wow, and he was there. There he is with it, uh, with it, James unveiling Stewart, it. James uh, Stewart came to uh, the unveiling, and uh, he liked his figure. He was, had no problems. Uh, some people had criticized it, but, and this was actually what was used um, from the sculptor. That's what he kept at his desk when he was making them. So when they did these things, she, my, they did one, Madame Tussauds did one of someone I know very well. And they went in, you know, with science now, what they do is science. It's not, it's not so much art, although it takes a talent. I'm not dismissing what they do. Uh -huh. But they're there with every single angle, every single, you know, measurement they could possibly have and they recreated. So it's almost like digital printing in a weird way, I think. Yes. And this was these were these were like freehand almost these people were doing it. That's mm -hmm. you don't realize what an art that is to, to be able to sculpt these people these features. I mean these did the Tin Man's eyes ever move? Um no they didn't, but you know what? This what is crazy. Those trees were haunted trees and they did move. <laughs> and uh, they you used in the original part of the uh, uh, Wizard of Oz at Movie Land Wax Museum, you kind of wandered through a forest. And these were haunted trees where they actually moved their arms. So there are, they are animatronic and their eyes went around. And it was very scary. And uh, I can imagine being a child and walking through that, how scary that would be. Yeah. But then over time, it was condensed to bring in more figures. So they kind of... Uh, condensed the whole set, but that is the original a uh, yellow brick road um, and the scarecrow uh, is original But the Tin Man was not and also uh, Now this is very interesting uh, if you look at the um, Lion, mm -hmm. it's a real lion's paw. Oh, it sure is. Look at the nails. And it's disintegrating But what's real interesting is um, 
when they made some uh, of the costumes for Wizard of Oz, what was that, 1939? Yeah, it was released in 39, yeah. Um, there were several different ones uh, that he wore and he used to smoke and he used to want to be able to get out of his costume quickly. So this one is open just like it was on oh, the other pieces. Yeah. And so, and that's a real lion's mane. So I'm wondering if that's not an original, but I've written to some people and asked them if they thought so and they said, no way. But I Who think knows? that it was yeah. more than one made. Yeah. You know? In fact, I think that there was probably a couple of them, maybe for just different scenes. But remember with the lion's pelt, they all had different colors to them. So they had to keep, you know, I'm very sorry. much in sync with that. This this face, these eyes are insane. They are, are they so indeed? good, yeah. Did you so you must have seen that they have the um the Cowardly Lion's headpiece at the Academy Museum now. That was uh that was pretty incredible to see. And the slippers. They have, they really did the odd stuff pretty well. Well that's and, uh, neat. Yeah. Now these are this is not the original Dorothy. No. This is actually one that was brought in from Copenhagen. I think she must have been a Snow White at one time. She looks very fairy tale like, um, but she was used for many years and was visited by lots of people at Movie Land. So she was the Dorothy in Movie Land, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, you know, okay, so it's not a replacement Dorothy. Oh, there's Toto in there. Wow. A little Toto. <laughs> Now, the one that was originally at Movie Land was animatronic, and he was pretty good size. He was probably built like Charlie up here. And you know, all those leaves are from all Movie Land, All those too. leaves. We <laughs> saved everything. I love it. Everywhere. Yeah. And the Haunted Mansion pieces. These well, are... that's interesting. I got those at the Disney Anna um, fan club. They had a show and sale, and I understand that they're Mark Davis's um, prints, of course, um, you could tell by the figures, they're not like the ones that are shown now in the Haunted Mansion, but these were considered the backup um, for the elevator prints, that's what I was told. And uh, they're pretty unique, they're very long, they're about nine feet tall. They're so cool. And I see something Lincoln in a frame back there. Yes, that's a piece of Abraham Lincoln's hair. His hair? His hair. <laughs> and it was given, actually, um, it was before he passed away. Now, there were some that were sold after he had passed away, but this is before. And it was given to uh, Southern Baptist College. And they had it. So I have all the documentation from this college because they sold small pieces of it. Wow. And I also have a little bit of his writing and I have a little piece of Mary Todd Lincoln's black dress that they said that she wore a lot of black dresses after Lincoln was um, assassinated. And W.C. Fields is happen to be right here. Yes, he is. <laughs> and we built him in a wow. stage where it looks like he's getting ready to go on. This is a whole, yeah, it's a little music hall, like a, a little, I love the curtains. I have a, uh, he redid a, a life mask that was Bud Westmoreland had uh, taken a cast from uh, Liz Taylor. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that is. And uh, he reworked it and made it into um, a decoration for me for my birthday. <laughs> because I share the same birth date. A month actually as uh, Liz Taylor in February. Oh really? Yes. Oh, and, oh. Uh, we have our daughter that we don't. We always wanted a daughter, <laughs> and here she is. Well, look at her. But she keeps turning her head from me. I don't know why. And uh, this and she's is Linda her, Blair her from Movie Land, Land Wax Museum. <sighs> this is like the real one from Movie Land. I remember this yes, so well. Now she was only up to here because she sat in a bed in front of a mirror. But now we made her where she just kind of hangs on in her socks and her nightie. Oh, do you got pee stains on the socks? I see. Yes. <laughs> yes, we sure do. Did you do that on purpose? He did. <laughs> you it. have to. And I bandaged her hands so she won't gnaw her hands off or fingers off. This is actually Roasty Toasty. And this is uh, from Disneyland. And it was on their popcorn co uh, wow. carts. And uh, this one's from Fantasyland. Everything has got a story in here. Everything. One thing that I used to have my claim to fame and it blocks out a window is my 
piece from uh, uh, The Prestige. Uh, remember when David Boy had played Tesla? Well, this is uh, the advertisement for Tesla. And so we have a picture of uh, David Boy standing in front of this. It was from the movie with Hugh Jackman, The Prestige. And it was trying to encourage people about electricity. Hmm. And then he mysteriously ended up in the trunk of somebody's car, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know what? It went on the top of the car and we drove home all the way from oh, Los oh. Angeles with this on the car. Oh, oh, oh. And people, we were it was like the parting of the Red Sea. Everybody got away from us. They were afraid it was going to fall off. That is hilarious. <laughs> I had the car packed with uh, props from Loft Appeal when they had the uh, Disney sale from all the movie props. Oh, this candelabra is from the Haunted Mansion. Wow. And um, it was wow. in the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion. But um, it works well with the... Yes, it does. With the Phantom of the Opera. It's perfect. Excuse me. Look at those. Peter Ellenshaw was uh, actually a mat decorator where he would do these uh, fantastic mats for Disney mm -hmm. and um, these are pieces that he had uh, carved and they were used in Island on Top of the World and those are the Viking gods and I love that one because it has bullet holes in their head <coughs> so they're foam Yes, they are. Wow, they look so real. And you know, it's so funny. My mother-in-law used to always come in here and say, oh my gosh, I don't want to walk past them really fast because if there was an earthquake, I'd be killed. But they're just really lightweight foam. <laughs> so, wow, wow. So I, I, I'm fascinated by this car. And now I see a window. Is that how you got it in here? Um, actually, it w here's what happened. We got the car home and it had to go immediately to the garage and it stayed there for five years. Mm -hmm. Then we had to try to figure out how to get it into the house. So that window had to be taken out mm -hmm. and it fit in exactly with just an inch on each side. Oh and we had to have eight people pick it up and bring it through. This was pre uh, Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. We got it in here and it stayed in my dining room for another several years i think almost four or five years until we had a group a friend devise how this would hang in our house and what it is is we didn't want any weight on the house so if you look at that tree that's actually a huge steel bar that goes right there and then it goes across hidden by the leaves comes down wow. so it's actually wow. on like a little swing yeah and then there's and a, it's so well well hidden that you wouldn't even know it that is that's fantastic planning and so we have a, a crane that we can let this down and up and it goes all the way through to the attic and it's on a winch so we have a, a remote control so if we needed to if we had to move <laughs> then we could actually swing the car out and then we could just kind of lower it down so it's perfect amount of space we got right here wow Look at that. <laughs> it's fascinating to me. I mean, the, your, your, your obvious passion for these, uh, for these, for these statues. I mean, can you, can you pinpoint when it started? Well, as far as uh, my life for wax, I used to go to the wax museum most of my life. Yeah. As soon as it opened in 62, I was there. Uh, I even tried to get a job there and they didn't think I was um, old enough. I was 18, but they said, oh, I look too immature. And they had tour guides at that time. Okay. And so huh. I always wanted to get a job there, but it didn't work you out. buying them out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, I've always been there. And then when I found out about the auction, oh my goodness, I was so excited. I memorized everything that was being sold so I would be ready. And so once we were able to get the car, and I think the real reason why that we got the car is I think people looked at it and thought, how are we gonna get this down out of the museum on our own? Uh, I would have to pay somebody to come in and get it out and it would cost us tons of money. Um, and it was rough because once it came down at Movie Land, remember the aisleways through the museum? We had to carry that car ourselves. And so we had to plan the exit route out to the mm -hmm, exit. Mm -hmm. 
and we had to carry that. Sometimes we had to turn it sideways and we'd be squished up against the wall and we couldn't hurt any of the other figures that were still there or the sex. We couldn't move them. We couldn't, we couldn't say, let's move that one aside. No. no and it was can't. actually, which is so crazy about everything, is it was right over this set, the Wizard of Oz. And we had to be very careful because it was being purchased by another person. And so we had to make sure that we didn't damage anything. Mm -hmm. And here it is, together. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so they're not going to give you a job at the Wax Museum, so screw you. I'm going to my own Wax Museum with all your statues. Well, that's always been a dream, and I always laugh because when I was a kid, and I was in school, mm -hmm. and I probably was eight or nine, they would have you stand up and tell everybody what you wanted to be when you grew up, and I said, someday I'm going to live in a castle with all my dolls, and they're going to be real big. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at and that. And here I am. Yeah, dreams come true. <laughs> In a good way, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like this <stuff. laughs> well, when it comes down to dusting, it's hard. That would be, do you have a, yeah, I would imagine. No housekeeper, nothing like that. I do everything, or well, we all do. We take turns. Um, that canned air really does help, mm -hmm. um, you know, blow off some of the dust. You can't have a lot of dust on some of the figures because I've been into museums that look like they were never touched mm -hmm. since they were put together, and that was their demise because you can't really bring them the wax back once it's mixed with uh, dirt oh gosh look at that uh, you missed the Pirates of the Caribbean poster oh. oh this was actually the poster before the bridge was put in at movie uh, at uh, Disneyland yeah um, in front of the Pirates of the Caribbean there was a big marquee and this is the picture this was the poster that was inside the glass case when you walked up to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Really? Yes. You have to tell the story. Well, what happened is um, <laughs> we were in the furniture business in Los Angeles, and in order for um, uh, a partner to be able to, uh, he had to get a job somewhere, and so he got a job getting rid of all of the assets at, um, uh, at Disneyland. And so he asked me to come out for lunch one day, and when I did, he says, are you interested in this poster? If you want it, I'll take it out. So he had the key, opened it up. But the worst thing mm -hmm. is I had to go to lunch with this poster all rolled up. And I even went on a ride with this poster. And I did have a picture of Johnny Depp John, addressed as um, Jack Sparrow. But the light from there just made his um, autograph disappear. So I uh -huh. had another one. Yeah, I, I understand that. Wow. <laughs> Don't they, it's now, do they have a, where this one was... Is there another poster there today? No, it's just the bridge, and then you go underneath it, and I believe it just has like a some sort of a writing where it's like in scroll with woodwork. It just says the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, I, I see. Uh, uh, I see. <laughs> I see. A, I see a mummy. That's what it is. It's Whoa. a mummified falcon, and it's Look. gosh, it's got to be over two thousand years old, and. It smells really good. It smells like cloves. This is interesting before we get to this piece. Um, Andy Warhol did the, um, uh, it, this was taken from Andy Warhol's picture of Liz. Mm -hmm. And this was her 60th uh, birthday party invitation that was held at Disneyland in Fantasyland. And Michael Jackson was there. Wow. So the <laughs> invitation is to Elizabeth's birthday party. 60th birthday party. Mm. And I have some napkins and stuff. Everything was purple. And since I share the same birthday month, February, um, Tom Fowler had taken a wax mold off of a live cast that was done by, but uh, I think it's Bud Westmoreland, and he did the makeup and hair pieces for Liz Taylor for Cleopatra. <clears throat> that is stunning because it does look like she could open her eyes. Doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. That's he does beautiful work. And then we put it in this case, which is just kind of a frame that we did. There's a chariot in this room. <gasps> yes, and that came out of the <laughs> Debbie Reynolds, um, actually her collection. Yeah, you got this a chariot is, in, your, in your room. <laughs> yes. In fact, wow. this is all the original pieces right here. This and this, these emblems. Um, I'm sure that she saved this so she could put this in her museum in Las Vegas. And these are the actual wheels. From from uh, from Ben-Hur. With Charlton Heston, yes. Wow. And she had this as a ticket booth. 
<laughs> I love it as and you do. So, <laughs> and it's heavier than heck. It's got to weigh eight or 900 pounds. How did and you it took, get it in here? Well, it had to come through the back and we had to get eight or nine neighbors to help us. <laughs> and we had to open our French doors. We wanted to put it in the living room. Yeah. But there's no way it would make it down the hallway. So this is where it's going to have to stay. And uh, the place where our Christmas tree goes. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have one this year, but... Uh, but your, your, your family, your son, your, your husband are all on board with this. They're yes. like, cool. Yeah. It's not, it's not mom's quirk thing. It's like, we're all, we all love this. Yes. <laughs> it's so cool. The only thing is we put so much stuff in here. There's no quick moves in the house. You can't just <laughs> all of a sudden get up and, you know, how many times I carried laundry through here and bumped myself trying to get through by the car uh, chariot. That's, yeah, I can understand. But, but you know what's <laughs> funny is that it's not, it, there's still plenty of elbow room in here. I understand what you're saying as far as traffic goes, if you needed to do your laundry, yeah. sure. But, I mean, it, like walking into this room, it's not, it doesn't, it's not overwhelming in that sense that there's no room to move. There's plenty of room to move. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is... I just finished uh, listening to Todd Fisher's book. Have you uh, Have you listened to that? He, um, no, I haven't, but I I can imagine this. Is it my girls, I think? Yeah. Or, okay. And it's, I mean, it, it's all... So much of it is about Debbie's plight to save things and how she was basically laughed, you know, out of uh, studios, uh, you know, Spielberg Geffen. She approached him, George Lucas, personally and said, let's do this. And they're like, no, what are you going to do with that? Just get rid of it. And this oh poor woman goodness. had all these things and she just finally gave up. All those, she had like five locations secured and they all fell through. And finally she just, screw it, I'm old. I, you know, I may as well. So all those lovely, wonderful things are scattered into the wind. They'll probably never be together ever again. Uh, and uh, But it, it's not her fault. And I guess it, Todd lent them some things at the museum to use of Debbie's because they shouldn't sell everything. Uh, under the stipulation that they named something like the Debbie Reynolds Preservation Area or something like that, which uh, I think they did do. It wasn't there when I saw it, but it, whole floors were cut off because it was not the opening yet. But but it's nice that they're giving a tribute. But poor Debbie, I mean, you're like Debbie Reynolds, you know. You, <laughs> you know, you're rescuing these things, and that's so wonderful because God knows what would happen to them otherwise. You know, there's do well, many people collect wax. Well, there are a few people, some high-end collectors that have the best of the best, where Gene Harlow's gone and John Wayne and, um, I mean, it's uh, uh, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy and Valentino and mm -hmm. all those wonderful ones. So they are in care and they are in a, a personal friend's museum. Oh, good. So they're, they're accounted for. Oh, they, yes. They're, okay. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, yes. Are there, are there any floating out in the world that you kind of think, oh, one of these days, I hope that shows up? Yes, all the time. In fact, it's, it hasn't been that long ago that I got the Wizard of Oz and I got the other pieces in there. And it's weird because I feel that if you put it out to the universe, it'll come to you. And it's just you know, maybe a real weird coincidence or it could be, you know, they're finding you, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you just collect something and you're passionate about it i think that things just come to you okay you have to explain you, we, we mentioned this earlier when we were communicating earlier you got to tell me about uh, fred mcmurray and his hands well that was a really crazy story, <laughs> I love this uh, story. we had, were so excited we had just got fred mcmurray and we got him home and we discovered that he was missing his the steering wheel to the car and his hands which were supposedly together and we thought, oh no, how did that get lost? Because he had been up there for ages, mm -hmm. you know. And so I happened to always check in every week at Off the Wall, which is on Melrose in Hollywood. And Dennis was there, and he had just bought The Shining from Movie Land Wax Museum with. Um, That's the owner of Off the Wall? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Okay. And so we got to talking about the auction and how exciting it was. And I said, well, I'm very excited what we got. But I feel really bad because now I'm going to have to come up with a steering wheel and the hands. And he just looked at me and said, you know what? That is so strange. I have a friend in San Francisco that bought some things from the auction and he got a box and it was miscellaneous items. And inside was a steering wheel to a car <laughs> with hands attached to it. And he said, just a minute. So he went and made a phone call and he said, are you interested in buying them? And I said, sure. And so they were at our house in about two or three days. 
That's that, that is <laughs> that is magic. I mean, that is magic at work. That's serendipity. Yes, that's that's what probably what you're, exactly what you're saying. Putting it out into the universe. Uh huh. Um, with with pure intentions. That's the thing. It's not like I want money. I want money. You know. Of course, that, who wouldn't? But yeah. But when you it's something you're really passionate about, and you did that, and look at that. It's magic. Um, I see heads. <laughs> yes, these pads um, are looking for their body that I haven't made yet. This is Madame Curry, and uh, she's a Pierre I Men's, which I told you that's from Paris. Oh, and uh, great. and then over there is Louis Pasteur, and so we were thinking of making them a laboratory, but we have to find a spot for them. And how old would you say these are? I would have to say that they're probably like the 1920s, turn of the century. Uh, um, well, she was later, so she couldn't have been too. It would have been really off for them to have made her that early. So, but I mean, the amount, the amount of care because they weren't displayed really to be seen that close up, were they? They weren't created to be one inch away from their faces, were they? But mm -hmm. yet, you could be with these. That's uh, yes. They they are so well detailed. Look at the hair on that. I mean, it's spectacular. Yes, it's uh, it's all hand punched hair and glass eyes. And uh, um, a lot of these things were also probably reused. Um, they were in like storefront windows. Um, remember, we used to see mannequins, or we still do, but those were used to be really spectacular, some of the yeah. window displays. Good mannequins, not those no face ones, or just severed mm -hmm. heads. Severed yeah. Heads. <laughs> oh. And that can there's a camera. Well, that's an interesting story, and Dimitri's going to tell you about a little bit about our uh, camera collection because one that. of them was in the Nuremberg trial. What? Yes. <laughs> going to tell you about Oh that. my gosh. So uh, <laughs> what? So this piece right here yeah. is a magic lantern. Uh, so it would a, be a kerosene mm -hmm. lit. So you would actually light a kerosene candle inside of it and then it would have glass slides and then you would be able to project still images and this is probably circa 1879 about. So what would that have been for um, a science or for entertainment, uh, it, do you think? It, most likely something of this caliber would probably be for education, yeah. for science. Um, we have uh, a, ch a child's one. It, it's a, it's a, sm a smaller one, which probably be more used for entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the larger ones would definitely be for education and science. Mm -hmm. So you collect cameras too. Yeah, we have a pretty extensive collection. Jeez, yes, you do. I'm just sitting here and I was like, oh my God, I'm missing all these. Oh my God. Um, Magic cube. Most of them are usable. I still shoot with some of them. Um, I use, I'm sure you recognize these. These are, this was the staple of. Those slides? Or those uh, this would be um, four by five large format film okay. slide. Um, but this was the, uh, the, the speed graphic was the camera for press back in the 40s, 50s. I mean, anytime you see anything, I mean, that was the Oh, camera. I see. It's got the, I see the, the reflector. Yeah, it has the, oh, okay. the, um, the flash back there. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I still shoot with this one all the time. Wow, uh, really? Portrait work. Um, this is, um, we're talking about the Nuremberg ring. Yeah. Spy cameras. <laughs> and that was strapped to his leg and they went in, uh, they were not supposed to have any kind of cameras. Um, during that trial. <laughs> so so you can imagine the size of film. How would they, how would they do that? Would they just reach down and is that how they would trigger it? so, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's spectacular. <laughs> so will you show us your other collections? You said you have more upstairs maybe? Can we see that? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Okay. Just take okay. your time. No rush. Okay. Because I, I want to see every, okay. look at this. We got Adventureland games. So this is all the... Is this is Fred McMurray posing for his wax figure. Oh, look at that. And this Nancy is the letter asking him if he could come down his likeness. That is so cool. Now, why is Nancy Olsen in that? Because she played his girlfriend Did in the she? movie. Yeah, he was supposed to get married to her, but he kept forgetting it. Remember? No, I don't. I haven't seen she the movie. She would always have these elaborate weddings, and then he'd forget to show up because he was building his laboratory stuff, uh, the flubber. And this is a picture of Fred visiting the set. And there's Alan Parkinson, who owned Movie Land Wax Museum. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, who's this? <laughs> oh, this is a sailor that was Christopher Columbus's sailor friend. That's what it said on the box. 
and he's a PRI man's. Isn't he cool? But I thought he looks good. He, like he should have been on the uh, submarine working or something. Yeah, and Pierre, Pierre Imens is yes. his name? Pierre Imens was um, actually, um, he he was a sculptor way back in like the turn of the century mm -hmm. in Paris. Mm -hmm. And he did wax figures for storefronts. Okay. Wow. And he started getting into celebrity things. These, I mean, the colors on that poster. Isn't that insane. great? Yeah. And then Harper Goff, which was a sculptor, and he worked with Walt Disney, he did the Nautilus down there. Oh, wow. And this is an actual porthole from the Nautilus at Disneyland. <laughs> oh, wow. And that's a piece of the coral that was underneath oh, the, uh, the submarine bridge. Yeah, with the mermaids down there, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. But it's very brittle. It's just hanging on. And this is a frog from Magnolia. Did you see the movie? <laughs> That's All like one of your frogs. favorites, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> that is really one of Troy's favorite movies. Is it? Yeah. Well, there is a lot of props. <laughs> and this is Don Knotts's costume. And it's is that Western costume? Oh, well, from from was that the reluctant astronaut? Uh, what was really interesting is. Um, it's not from that movie. It was some sort of show, variety show that he did. But what was really interesting is Raquel Welch had used this for her music video. And I have all the costumes from that. I love that. that, that it's all spacey. Yes, I love that. That's it. That's it. <laughs> really skinny I could fit into that costume <laughs> not this one but the other one that Raquel Welch wore I with love that special with the lightning bolts. yes and she had all the people with the domes on their heads like dancers yes, you know? I have all those, <laughs> those are so they're cool. up here <laughs> they're and up here of course they are <laughs> now do you remember the movie Armageddon yes, yes, yes okay yes. do you remember when Bruce Willis had to take the big piece of tool and put yeah. it around the guy's neck oh my gosh to choke him these are them wow I love that movie. Oh, there he is with them right there. Yes. Wow. I love that line. Why would you bring a gun in space? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is from Independence Day, and that's part of the ship. I love that movie, too. Wow, these are really so well displayed, too. Oh, thank you. And this is uh, uh, actually, it was from the lobby of MGM. Uh, studios and it's got Gene Kelly's clothes from American in Paris. No kidding. Yeah. And he's really cool. And uh, here, if you'd like to go in, this is actually the pirate door to the pirate away. ship at Disneyland. <laughs> and what's this really so crazy, cool. <laughs> what's really crazy is that's Bill when he was little standing in front of the pirate door. Oh, wow. That's another story. And this is me that because is... I bought it when I was pregnant and I had it put in my son's room. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And uh, oh my gosh. this is Elvira's wedding dress. <laughs> Her last wedding dress. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far, I was sure. Wow, oh, it's Houdini's, gosh. Yes, that's uh, from the Houdini. I saw your picture of when you were at the estate. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That's when it came it. from there, but now, of course, they redid that yeah. one. These are lobby cards. Um, excuse me, not lobby cards. Those are title cards that came out of an old 1920s um, movies, silent films, and... Houdini had a whole bunch of them, and he used them as files for his uh, dividers oh, for his. I think you told that story, didn't you? When your yes, video, yes, I did. Yeah, you did. I remember. Wow. And uh, that's Luella Parsons. Um, oh, and Hedda. And Hedda. Those are both <laughs> autographed. Wow. Now this is a set from the Marx Brothers. So. So who else has snow in their upstairs <laughs> room? And I'm waiting for the Marx Brothers someday. Someday. <clears throat> yeah, it'll happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, and then um, this is the whole set, as you remember it, at Movie Land Wax Museum. And, oh, uh, is that the cowboy you were talking about? Yeah, that's Herb. <laughs> Herb? I don't know if he's what he is exactly. Maybe he's real, maybe not. Not sure. You know how those old mm -hmm. carny folks were. Mm -hmm. He's got a ring on, too. That's, <laughs> I that's know. weird. 
<laughs> I know, he is. And uh, I gave him the moonshiner jug because I thought he needed one. And he came with that rocking chair. He's hooked to it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I love how uh, uh, this was the Marx Brothers. And remember, uh, Groucho was standing right there. And I love how he had a plunger. Oh, in his was, golf cart? Yeah, yes. oh, his golf clubs, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's uh, so wow. So, this came from the you bought the set from the Hollywood, and this is the set. No, from Movie Land Wax. Oh, Movie Land, I'm sorry, yeah. And somebody else had bought the figures already. Yeah. And you know who that is now. Too. Yes, I okay. do. So, well, that's fingers crossed. But yes. I have a feeling that's going to happen. I hope so. And that's my sleepy cat. Aww. And then I have a Western <laughs> section. <laughs> <laughs> and this came out of uh, Disneyland, in um, it was in. Uh, the area where they had the Frontierland um, Arcade, and that's called the Shoot the Bear. That's supposed to be Pluto. And How did you shoot it? Was there a gun? Oh, yeah, I see oh, you yes, the gun over the here. Guns. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and it's you a light thing. You stood back, and there was like a log, mm -hmm. and you kind of propped yourself up, and I guess it was just all electronic. Mm -hmm. I forgot how it was. It exactly. looks like it's a light flash, and mm -hmm. those things are light sensitive. It, it's what it looks like anyway. I mean, you would know. Is that a real foot? You got there. real bones over there, huh? Yes, I do. I collect them. Oh, uh, <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> that is, um, wow. I think it's the vertebrae from a giant sloth. Uh, sloth. And oh, yeah. oh, this is part of rear window. This is part of a set. Oh yeah. Wow. And so um, it, it'll be going with Jimmy and his crutches. His his are those his real crutches too from the set? Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, that was another one of my favorites. I found one of my favorites. I love when they use like the real props like that, you know. They uh I love that. It's a Captain Hook's outfit. Yes, it is from Disneyland. And um I happened to find this hand and then I found a map of Neverland. Perfect. So I thought, oh gosh. And this is uh the Titanic generator from the movie and you can see uh, Leonardo DiCaprio oh, and yeah. Kate Winslet standing next to it. <clears throat> Boy, this stuff, I mean, it's so wonderful that it ended up with you because, you know, it's a real appreciation for it. And so many people, I could have just been, you know, stuck in the back of some room somewhere. Well, we were down at the beach, down at Sunset Beach, and my son was riding his little bike and he went ahead of me and we loved Titanic. And as soon as he saw it, it said, Titanic generator, it was right out there in the front of the store. And he was right, trying to ride his bike fast and he was all nervous and excited. Mm -hmm. And he, he got back and said, there's something from the Titanic. We gotta get it, we gotta get it. So anyways. <laughs> Not just you have to see it, we have to get it. I yes. love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you went up to the guys and say you, wanna, you wanted it and you ended up getting it. Yes, That's and so it was cool. terrible too because he was still, you know, I mean, we had to have our seatbelts on, but we had, some of us had to lay down in the car and <laughs> so this would fit in. <laughs> and this is uh, some dishes from the Titanic, and we have coal from the Titanic. And this was um, in James Cameron's um, uh, place setting for first class, and I have it for second class and third class, but I thought I'll just display this. Wow. And that's a menu holder, and I always loved this part. It was the last um, telegraph that was, um, you know, it's not, it's a reproduction of the last telegraph. Mm -hmm. when they were telegraphing for help before they went down. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last moment of <gasps> <Yes>. help. <laughs> and then uh, this guy is, um, oh, we forgot to turn on the light. Oh, he did turn on the lights. <laughs> um, this is uh, a Pierre Imens, and he is part of that set that I got. And uh, he was, uh, you know, I guess he was just like a generic man that they used for something but i love him and he looks good with his titanic he, hat he looks really good they those are so well done glass eyes hand punched hair <laughs> <laughs> the people on that? the floor <laughs> oh, <laughs> this guy oh, here. Oh. he was in the, the chamber of horrors <laughs> and he was probably tortured poor guy he looks like he was colonial i don't know where to put him at the moment <laughs> it works well. <laughs> Were you having him? Well, I, I wouldn't was, have. I wouldn't you know have what I wanted to do with this guy is I was going to drive oop, a oh. stick through his head, um, you know, and maybe put him in the scene somehow. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. 
and <laughs> I'm building this guy, but he's still in the works because I have Tom Selleck's body and it's kind of leaning and falling apart and I want to get a different body. But this backdrop, which is really cool, it lights up, it's, it's from cute. Hollywood Wax. And uh, those are actually from Egypt, the lamp and this piece here. So who is the man in the chair? Oh, that's, um, that's Fernando. And that's Sadiq. Uh, Fernando, I made him up. Yeah, he's uh, actually, he was Vladimir. You know, remember the guy that was Impaler? He used to impale people. Oh, Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I made him into a 1920s explorer. Okay. That's and, the severed heads. Yeah. And, and so, anyway, so I have him here and I have this big elephant chair. This set <laughs> actually became too big. I shouldn't have made it this big. Um, but, you know, sometimes. You, know, you said know. he's got Tom Selleck's body? Yes. Underneath it was Tom Selleck's body leaning against um, like a rail for the one show. I forgot what the name of it was. Magnum P.I. or yes. something. It must be that one, yeah. Yeah. And so he's leaning on a box. and. Um, oh, I see. He's got his legs crossed, doesn't he? I think. Yeah. Like and just the yeah. whole thing isn't working. He's super heavy. and uh, But I'm going to try to redo him. And I'm trying to put anything that I have that's kind of, you know, Adventureland, uh, Indiana Jones mm -hmm. in here. And this is from the Scorpion King. And I don't know where the spear went. Thank you for, for letting us experience your wonderland in here. And, uh, and your YouTube channel is, is called... The Weird and the Wonderful. Weird and the Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And... Please follow us, Cynthia, because we have to encourage this to continue. This is so wonderful. And I, I love the fact that you're saving these things and, and just really rescuing them from whatever obscurity or possibly even, you know, God forbid, you know, being destroyed. So it's wonderful. And then obviously the care that you put into these things and, and completing the sets. I love it. You know, there's one other thing I have to ask you about. I'm looking at a mouth. Is that Judy Garland's mouth? Yes, it is. Can Actually, I, it's... Um, can I reach and get it? Sure. Go ahead. This. Look at that. When Tom Fowler uh, was given uh, the Judy Garland, the original one from Movie Land Wax Museum, it disintegrated in his hands. It was that brittle. And this was all that was left, and he gave it to me as a gift, the mouth. That was all that was left. That is me. wild. The original Judy. <laughs> But see, now, so your channel, Weird and the Wonderful, is, is you, I've seen your videos that you have up there, and I can't wait to you post more, because I, I just, like I said, my eyes popped out of my head when I saw that first one. I was like, I need to know, Cynthia. And oh, I'm so, I'm so grateful you. that you were able to uh, invite us over and let me, let me uh, uh, shoot some of the video on this. But I really hope that you get followers out of this. You will. I know you will. Oh, and, well, and you thank you. You deserve them. You deserve all the, uh, all the, all the attention and the, uh, accolades for for this because it's I have, I have so much respect for you oh well so, thank, thank you and you. i feel the same about you and your shows they're just wonderfully detailed and exciting and uh we're such weirdos aren't we i think we're kindred <laughs> well, it's i really fun to do be a weirdo, don't you think because <laughs> not being a weirdo is no fun yes but uh but it's neat because their whole family loves us your son dimitri and your husband who i met earlier bill mm -hmm. all of you guys love this stuff and it's so neat because yes. a lot of times you'll have a you know, I like this, and the, the partner is like, yeah, well, don't really. that would have been really difficult, wouldn't it's, it? Yeah. It's not like we can hide it. Yeah, yeah. So I think <laughs> it's so neat. You encourage each other, and and uh, well, thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, it's so oh, nice to meet I'm you. I'm so glad you did. Weird <laughs> and the Wonderful on YouTube. Follow Cynthia, and thank you. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Come back anytime. We will. <laughs> we'll probably be here tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. heard me.